So, good morning everyone. So, going to start our lecture with your human body. So, in here you have your um, 60%, uh, let's say 50% would be coming from your return demonstration. So, we're going to have return demonstration, particularly the different um, anatomical terms and positions. So, which we will be dealing with, uh, dealing with later on. So, we have first, we're going to describe your human anatomy. Anyways, the, the, the other 50% would come from your quizzes and your final exams, plus your exercises. So, the exercises would be 10%, then 20% would come from your quiz, and then we have the final exam. Okay, the human anatomy, or the anatomy means the study that deals with this, with the study of different structures of the human body. When you say different structures of the human body, different parts of the human body. Well, your physiology it is the science that deals with the structures, with the study of functions of the different parts of the human body. So the physiology is we're going to add. Um, studying the functions aside from identifying the parts in the word anatomy. So you have already identified the part of the in anatomy or the anatomy of the body and then now we're going to study further by identifying also its functions. That is now your physiology. Okay, to, to begin with, we're going to discuss from atoms to organisms. The structural level of the human body, the first level, so by level po siya. First level is the chemical. The chemical level which consists of atoms considered as the, ti the tiny building blocks of matter that forms molecules. So, pag kinukumpul-kumpul na yung atom o kung sa period pa, kinumpul yung period sa naging molecule siya. So, lumaki yung period. So, di ba? Mas malaki na siya. Kung sa bato, gik from sand to rock and uh, no from sand to pebbles then to rock then to stone next is yes, we have your um molecules in turn associate to form cells so from from that of atoms naging molecules and then in molecules we have now your cell cell is the smallest unit of the all living organism or the functional unit of your all living organism so this is now your cellular level so from chemical level from atoms to molecules pagdating sa cell naging cellular level na po siya. this continues on the tissue level so from cell plus cell plus cell or plus cell plus cell equals to tissue and then from tissue where cells group together to form organs. So, from tissue naging organs na po. So, we will now... Uh, an organ is a system, system which is group of... Or, learn from organs, then he naging system siya, which is group of organs cooperate to accomplish a common purpose. In, in all... In all 11 organ systems make up the living body or the organisms which represents the highest level of structure of the organization or that is your organism level okay so from atoms to molecules to molecules we have to cell then cell to tissue then we have to organ and then we have your system so we have here organ system reviews we have here from the cell so here is your cell where is that so here so we have here from the cell lagging molecule number two a chemical level lagging cellular level then tissue level from that tissue lagging organ level the organ level lagging system and then after that there is that makes that made now your human body so the running person is the human body from atoms molecule to cell that is your cellular or uh, chemical level then from cell to tissue that is your cellular level and then from tissue to organs so then we have also from organs to system then that makes up your human body so before we're going to deal with it individually we have to 
um, identify it first and we have to briefly discuss one of each. One is your integumentary system. Integumentary system deals with your external covering of the body or in other words, the skin. It is waterproof and it cushions and protects the deeper tissue from injury. The temperature, pressure, and pain receptors located in the skin that that makes now alert that makes the skin alert us to what it is hap what is happening at the human body surface, di ba? For example, kung mainit yung surface but surface temperature niyo po, as we have discussed in our several several of our modules, pag mainit po ang surface temperatures, the human body will going to react by lowering the core temperature inside the body but to protect now the organs and the system kasi pawal po siya mainit na mainit so effects so they will be opposite from from hot in your surface temperature the inner or the core temperature will become cold that is to maintain balance uh, remember that so you are going to um, signal by it through the skin next is your skeletal system the skeletal system consists of bones cartilage ligaments and joints it supports the body and provides a framework that the skeletal muscles can use to cause movement so kailangan po yung skeleton kasi kung walang skeleton po palit po tayong bulate so we uh, we look like a worm kung walang skeleton and we cannot even stand it also protects the internal organs of the human body. Diba? The rib cage or the, the ribs, the sternum. The sternum and the rib cage protects your lungs and your heart. Diba? Next is your muscular system. So this is composed of tiny of the muscles of the body. Na tiny muscles can be viewed as the machines of the body. Okay, because muscle does work. Remember that. I have plenty of work. And we have nervous system. The nervous system is the control system of the body. It consists of the brain and then spinal cords, nerve and sensory receptors of or this can be divided into central nervous system and or peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system, we have your brain and the spinal cord and then your peripheral nervous system. <coughs> Excuse. This is now the the wirings or the cords that connects from your from your heart or lungs to heart then to the systemic circulation to your cell okay and next to that is your endocrine system like the nervous system the endocrine system controls the body activities but in if your brain controls the body activity in a fast mode your nerve your endocrine system um, controls the body of the body in a slower pace ha huh? and ang 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 kung boss mo yung nervous system boss din po yung um endocrine system so like the nervous system the endocrine system controls the body activity much more slowly so as what is said slower slowly so the endocrine glands produce hormones and release them into the blood or trap or to travel relatively distant target organs so my target organs lang po yung mga um endocrine system example target organs you are going to release your um endocrine hormones di ba? So, ang target, how they, could, they were going to stimulate a certain organ to release endocrine hormones. So, ang isa-send lang po ni pituitary gland is your mass stimulator to stimulate now your ovary to produce hormone. Okay, hormone. That's at your endocrine. Next is your cardiovascular system. The primary organs of the cardiovascular system are the heart and the blood vessels this system carries oxygen nutrients hormones and other substances to and from the tissue cells where exchanges are made so from the heart ang heart po yung nagkikerry ng ano 
Kasi together siya with your blood vessels. See, they are highly connected. And then we have also the lymphatic systems. The role of the lymphatic system is complementary that to that of the circulatory system. Okay, complement. You're going to give a hand to your circulatory system. Its organs include lymphatic vessels, lymph nodes, and all other lymphoid organs such as spleen and tonsils. The respiratory system. That is why in your lymphatic system, if you have problems with your respiratory system, it will become inflamed, particularly in the side of your neck. You have a lymph nodes there, there that will be um, inflamed once you will have your um, fever. Respiratory system. The job of the respiratory system is to keep the constant lymph supplied with oxygen and to remove car carbon dioxide. The, the respiratory system consists of the nasal path passages or the embutas yung sa ilong, pharynx, then and then your larynx or the voice box, and then trachea, and then next is the bronchi, and of connected to the lungs okay to the lungs next is from the bronchi bronchioles then to the alveoli or uh, definitely the lung body digestive system the digestive system is basically a tube running through the body body's mouth to the anus the organ the organs of the digestive system include the oral cavity the mouth esophagus stomach and small and large intestines plus your rectum Okay, and of course, we have also your liver. Next is your urinary system. This system is often called as the excretory system. Okay, because they're going to urinate, they're going to excrete waste. It's composed of kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. This system functions to remove waste from blood and flushes them from the body in the form of your urine. Okay. Reproductive system. The last system that we're going to deal with. We have this system exists primarily to produce offspring. So, para makaanak. And for the person to have serve its purpose and that is to multiply. And which carries sperms to the outside world. And female uterine tube, uterus, vagina, and other reproductive structures. So, okay. So, we have deal with the reproductive system. Now, we will proceed with the language of the human anatomy. One is anatomical positions of the body. This is what we're going to do in our return demonstration. So, in standing straight, feel to get a fit together facing the observer. So, you're going to stand. We, you could also imagine standing in front of the mirror. My arms at the sides with the palms up. Facing forward. So, ganyan. So, so that the thumbs are directed to the side of the body. So, you're going to perform this one and then planes, movements. Sagittal plane, frontal plane, and transverse plane. Sagittal plane divides the body into right and left. So, that is your sagittal, right and left. While your frontal plane divides the body from front to back. And transverse plane, I mean, divides the body into superior and inferior parts. So, we have three planes, huh? Your sagittal, frontal, and your transverse plane. Functional system. When we say ventral, that is the anterior part or the front part. Okay, example. Your face is located at the ventral part, diba? Next is dorsal, that is your posterior part or your back part. Example. Ano example natin? So, example. Your scapula is found in the posterior part of the back, diba? So, that is, uh, that is your posterior or dorsal part. And then, superior or cranial, the upper part or closer to the head. Let's say, just like what we have um, um, discussed, we have your superior, so near the head. For example, the heart is superior to the liver. Bakit? Mas, mas, Malapit po si heart sa head compared sa liver, di ba? 
And then next is also we have inferior or caudal, the lower part. Example, your hip is inferior to your waist, di ba? The hip daw is inferior to the waist, so that is now your inferior. And next, we have also your median or, median or middle or the center. So the heart is the center of the body, so that is your medial or median. And next, we have also your... Medial part closer to the midline, you're done of that. They have also the lateral. Lateral is the part farther from the midline or at the sides. That is your lateral. Medial, then lateral. And superficial, this is closer to the surface, diba? Right? Other parts or external parts. So, superficial. Next is your dip. Internal or inner part, okay. So I have here an illustration showing what is your lateral. The lateral is the side, while the medial is at the center. Dorsal would be, um, dorsal is your um back, while your ventral is your front. Proximal is the all, and then we have also distal layo, diba? And then cranial head part and your caudal or the tail part or your feet and then we have also sagittal plane that divides the body from left to right and then we have also your coronal plane that divides the body from front and back transverse plane it divides the body from superior to inferior okay do you have uh, do you follow Next, we have other terminologies such as your abdominal, anterior body trunk, or inferior to the ribs. Diba? And then we have the antecubital. Antecubital folds. Dili sa ito ang arm. There is our anterior surface of the elbow because the posterior is the elbow. Anterior is the front is your antecubital folds. Axillary or armpit, brachial or arm, buccal or the cheek area, carpal kung wrist, cervical kung neck region, cervical sha. Then we have because you have C5, the right? cervical 5, C1, C2. And then we also have your digital so fingers. That is your digits, diba? If you're going to point, so you gave the person the the, the single centa uh, no single peso. Femoral or the thigh, then inguinal and uh, in area that where thigh meets the body trunk. In nasal kung nose, oral kung mouth, orbital meaning eye area, and patellar that is anterior D. Then you also have patellar, anterior knee, and then you also have your peroneal, that is lateral part of the leg, can you? It's the side of the leg, that's your peroneal. And pubic, genital area, anterior part of the body, because the posterior only code is your butt, diba? Right? And then you have also sternal or, sternal or the breastbone area, and of course, the last one is your thoracic. Okay, do you have any questions? So, have here the picture how you study the different parts. We also have your um, orbital or your eye, bu buccal or your cheek. And we also have your mental, that is your chin area. And sternal, that is your breastbone, thoracic meaning your chest, mammary or your breast. Auxiliary armpit abdominal, we have your... How would you read this one? Abdomen. And you have also your antikibital, that is your frontal part of the elbow. Okay. Do you have any question? And next is your... The epidermis is also considered as the thinnest. Thinnest is considered also as the thinnest at the area such as the eyelids. Why? Eyelids meaning there is a talukap and while it is the thickest in the palms and soles. Ha? So, sa, pa, pa, sa kamot or sa palad or sa, or sa imang lapalapa. Because they need to be thick. Why? Because you had, they were going to step on or you're going to... 
um, hold mga rough objects. So that is why also na um, they should be maintained thick. But since of the sama siya, evolution, people tend to hate thickness of the skin layers. That is why they're going to remove the thickness of your soles through foot spa. So we have, there are four layers of the skin. Actually, five. Five siya. So I'm going to tell you later on nga na five siya. So here in your book, we have stratum corneum. Stratum corneum. So this is your horny layer and it is composed of dead cells. Mone siya ang Saman siya, mone siya ang outermost part of the epidermis. Mone siya ang mo um, manimbalo, mo manimbarot or mutindog kung kuan if you experience this what they called as your um, sets of emotions or let's say um, if you are exposed to something that you hated the most. So, malimbar, malimbar it And next is your stratum lucidum or the lucid layer. What do you mean by lucid layer? It has what we called as your watery layer. Oh, it, it is constantly producing your water for lubrication. Ha? Lubrication. It produces your water for lubrication. And the next is, in your picture, ha, this is the, we have here your epidermis, which has a layer such as your stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, and then next is stratum granulosum. Stratum granulosum known as the granular layer for water retention and heat regulation. It is the one responsible of maintaining the outermost layer and the inner part of the skin balanced. Or it is the granular layer. So it, usually this is also considered in your epidermis as your the what we call this one the, the layers that tend to produce or regenerate. Uh, so anyway, your stratum, in your stratum corneum, as what I've said, it is the outermost layer, and it is also it is also considered as the roughness, roughest layer. I mean, so it has it, and while your stratum lucidum, this is a clear li layer or fluid, lucid from the word lucid. A watery layer. It is two to three rows of clear, flat, dead keratinocytes in palms or in the foot or sole. Skin on thick skin and missing in thin skin. Your stratum lucidum is present only among thick skin, while your stratum ang wala siya sa mga thin skin. Next is your stratum granulosum. So we have then, um, we have discussed this is living keratinocytes that form keratin. And then we have also this is also your granular layer for water retention. So kung dapat na maintain na itong na to ang lucidum nga moisturized. So, ang source niya water dira is ang imang granulosum. Plus also your heat production. And the next is we have here your um, the fourth layer is the the stratum Spinosum. Spinosum. But sometimes this spinosum is also absent. Okay? Because your spinosum is a spiny layer. So usually it is present in the soles of the foot and in the palms. And then this is for cell regeneration, which is very much active in this particular area. That is why if you're going to remove your, your thickened soles through foot spa, you would notice that after a week, muha it siya. Okay, because of that satum, ger, ano, spinosum. Mm. And next, number four, uh, number five, sa na, itong kag-insert is sa higher spinosum, itong insert Next is stratum germinativum or stratum basale. This contains now your melanocytes or the cell producing pigment or or your cold, your, cold, your 
melanin. Or your stratum germinativum from the word germinate, it is considered as the factory of the cell. It connects now the epidermis to the dermis. So asa man siya ang imuang factory da asa sa sa stratum germinativum or another term for that is your stratum basale. Next is your um this basale is very much important to protect your skin from cell destruction or damage especially if you expose it to the heat of the sun remember that monang because the heat of the sun is said to deplete the immune system that is why you have to keep your stratum basale or germinativo the uh, germinativum that functional so dapat functional ang imong stratum basale or germinativum next is your so, we have here the five layers na ha. We have stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and the last one is stratum basale or stratum germinativum. Para di mo makalibog, we have C for cum, corneum for cum, lucidum for lets, granulosum is get, Ganulosum or get then spinosum ang stratum spinosum number four is your sun spine then we have also the the basale or germinativum is example your basale or your burnt so come let's get sunburned okay next is your dermis the dermis is the inner layer of the skin that's also known as the corium. This layer is 20 to 30 times thicker than that of the epidermis. And this contains bundles of collagenic fibers which give strength, flexibility, and elasticity of your skin. It is the site blood vessel nerve the site of blood vessels nerves and um epidermal appendages or oh, what are the epidermal appendages we have your hair actually your dermis para di malibog it is the is it, it is the one that um contain your collagen and elastic el elastin fibers para to maintain the Elasticity of the skin, ha. Huh? So it also contain your blood vessel, and it houses your nerve fibers for nerve fibers for touch, temperature, and your pain. So as a pet, your dermis, dermis. So you would feel cold because of your dermis, and we have also this is also the. So hello everyone, we are now at the, at, at the first system that we're going to discuss, the, the integumentary system. So the integumentary system, we have the two main layers of the skin. Anyways, before we're going to discuss your layers, we're going to um, define first your integumentary system. We have, it is considered as the largest organ of the body. Your integumentary system is considered the largest organ of the, of the body, which functions as follows. One is we have protection from infection and extreme temperature. So you have here the functions below, but um, it was uh, I have to simplify it so that you could understand it more fully. So generally, your integumentary system protects you from infection and extreme temperature example um remember that it to, to to be to become a healthy individual you have to um make sure that your skin is intact and free, free from any broken so that the microorganism won't enter inside your skin once you end your skin has in as an opening and then that's the time that you are prone to develop infection that is why um those people who undergone this what we call 
um, operations or surgical operations, they have this tendency to have an infection out from um, the contaminated materials being used during the operation. Another, the the contamination, uh, contaminated hands of the of the provider or the nurse that perform this dressing that is why you have to wear um gloves during during wound dressing and despite of the fact that you have already do the hand washing another we have also your it is a protection from the extreme temperature remember if the the, um, the temperature of the environment is extreme let's say very hot your skin is the one that protects the underlying organ to prevent it from being damaged that is why just for example if you ex expose your skin to the heat of the sun you would notice that you were going to um you're going to cause redness on the skin or to the extent or in the layman's term you could e even um say that um, don't expose yourself too much to the heat of the sun because you will turn black diba? and for the example if those people who expose themselves to the heat of the sun always you would notice on their faces they will have this melanotic freckles or dark dark spots because um especially if they are they get older already because the darkening of the skin is your preventive is a preventive measure of the of your skin itself to protect the underlying part from damage okay so mo nang ma darken siya but of course if we have melanotic freckles or your ex, um, extreme or excessive production of your melanocytes or the cells that produce your melanin or darken a darkening of the skin um it is not aesthetic to look at diba kinsa may ganahan mo lang taw sa face nga daghang mga itom itom diba so it is very uh, it is very bad especially if you are a female or a lady but kung lalaki wala man sila ipakialam that is why if they have dark spots on their skin they just ignore it pero ang babae because babae is known to be maarte that is why we have to seek for remedies. That is why also we seek for remedies. We try to apply mga astringent on our faces to protect our, um, to make, not to protect, but to make our skin look um, beautiful. But basically, the, the function itself of the skin would be, the, would be, talk in is very much um, normal in a sense that their skin is in a layered form which we'll be discussing later on number two function okay aside from example for an extreme temperature let's say you're cold you would notice that you're going to protect your skin by maintaining balance by if example you experience cold that is why you have to the surface temperature is cold then you have to maintain balance by eating a lot of foods to provide heat of the body that is the time during cold season there there are facts that people tend to grow bigger bigger and gain weight during cold season why because if our surface temperature feels cold definitely our core temperature should be kept warm to maintain what i've said your balance okay that is why you will eat a lot of foods too to endure the the cold produced by the environment and so that to maintain balance okay maintain temperature because because it was said that temperature regulation and maintain fluid balance is one of the functions of the skin okay next is synthesize vitamin d your your skin has this ability to synthesize vitamin d produced by the sun so it has a component that we're going to be um that we're going to convert that will be converted to vitamin D once exposed to early morning sun rays. It was said early morning, ha, because dili pwede nang alas alas onse na because it is dangerous. It is now um, produces a harm, harmful effect on the skin. Just like the, based on the fact that it was going to produce your melanotic freckles. Number four, we have um, the fourth 
is fun of uh, fourth function it is it acts as a sense organ it has many nerve endings and communicate to all range of stuff such as emotions health like example if you are if you saw your crush on the street you will do some blushing of the face diba mamula ka so if somebody were going to tease you that your boy boyfriend or girlfriend was there so you will experience blushing or even flushing or what you mean by blushing and flushing you will have this um redness or pink coloration onto your cheek particularly and even you're going to sweat or you're going to do some sweating Remember that the skin, if dam damaged, it tends to, compl to complicate, but also remember it heals very quickly because the skin itself is a self-repairing organ. Again, the skin is a self-repairing organ. It repairs itself. Okay. So, in the picture, you have, you have seen the different layers of the skin. One is... Um, we're going to discuss the first layer of the skin or the outermost layer which is the epidermis. You try to see the picture had the big one. So this is the epidermis. Your epidermis is the the outermost layer of the skin. Okay. The outermost layer of the skin is your epidermis. And next is your the epidermis is also considered as the thinnest thinnest is considered also as the thinnest at the area such as the eyelids why eyelids meaning there is a talukap and while it is the thickest in the palms and soles ha? so sa pa, pa, sa kamot or sa palad or sa, or sa imong lapalapa because they need to be thick why because you had they were going to step on or you're going to um, hold mga rough objects so that is why also na um, they should be maintained thick but since of the evolution people tend to hate thickness of the skin layers that is why they're going to remove the thickness of your soles through foot spa so we have there are four layers of the skin actually five five sha so i'm going to tell you later on nganong na five sha so here in your book we have stratum corneum stratum corneum so this is your horny layer and it is composed of dead cells monisha uh um, so monisha ang outermost part of the epidermis mauni siya ang mo um, manimbalo mo manimbarot or mutindog kung kuan if you experience this what they called as your um, sets of emotions or let's say um, if you are exposed to something that you hated the most. So, malimbar, malimbar it in And next is your stratum lucidum or the lucid layer. What do you mean by lucid layer? It has what we called as your watery layer. Oh, it, it is constantly producing your water for lubrication. Ha? Lubrication. It produces your water for lubrication. And the next is, in your picture, ha, this is the, we have here your epidermis, which has a layer such as your stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, and then next is stratum granulosum. Stratum granulosum known as the granular layer for water retention and heat regulation. It is the one responsible of maintaining the outermost layer and the inner part of the skin balanced. Or it is the granular layer. So it, usually this is also considered in your epidermis as your the what we call this one the, the layers that tend to produce or regenerate. Uh, so anyway, your stratum, in your stratum corneum, as what I've said, it is the outermost layer, and it is also it is also considered as the roughness roughest layer. I mean, so it has it, and while your stratum lucidum, this is a clear la layer or fluid 
lucid from the word lucid it's a watery layer it is two to three rows of clear flat dead keratinocytes in palms or in the foot or sole skin on thick skin and missing in thin skin your stratum lucidum is present only among thick skin while your stratum ang wala siya sa mga thin skin next is your stratum granulosum so we have then um, we have discussed this is living keratinocytes that form keratin and then we have also this is also your granular layer for water retention so kung dapat na maintain na tong na to ang lucidum nga moisturize so ang source niya water dira is ang imong granulosum plus also your heat production and the next is we have here your um the fourth layer is the the stratum spinosum spinosum but sometimes this spinosum is also absent okay because your spinosum is a spiny layer so usually it is present in the soles of the foot and in the palms and then this is for cell regeneration which is very much active in this particular area that is why if you're going to remove your your thickened so through foot spa you would notice that after a week muha it siya okay because of that stratum ger ano spinosum mm. and next number four uh, number five sa natong kag insert is a higher spinosum atong insert next is stratum germinativum or stratum basale this contains now your melanocytes or the cell producing pigment or or your called your called your melanin or your stratum germinativum from the word germinate it is considered as the factory of the cell it connects now the epidermis to the dermis so asa man siya ang imo ang factory da sa 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 stratum germinativum or another term for that is your stratum basale next is your um this basale it's very much important to protect your skin from cell destruction or damage, especially if you expose it to the heat of the sun. Remember that. Monang, because the heat of the sun is said to deplete the immune system. That is why you have to keep your stratum basale or germinativo, the, uh, germinativum that functional. So, dapat functional ang imang stratum basale or germinativum. Next is your... So, we have here the five layers na ha. We have stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and the last one is stratum basale or stratum germinativum. Par di mo makalibog, we have C for cum, corneum for cum, lucidum for let's, granulosum is get. Granulosum or get then spinosum ang stratum spinosum number four is your sun spine then we have also the the basale or germinativum is example your basale or your burnt so come let's get sunburned okay next is your dermis the dermis is the inner layer of the skin that also known as the corium. This layer is 20 to 30 times thicker than that of the epidermis. And this contains bundles of collagenic fibers which give strength, flexibility, and elasticity of your skin. It is the site blood vessel nerve the site of blood vessels nerves and um epidermal appendages so what are the epidermal appendages we have your hair actually your dermis para di umalibog it is the is it, it is the one that um contain your collagen and elastic elastin fibers para to maintain the elasticity of the skin ha so it also contain your blood vessel 
and it houses your nerve fibers for nerve fibers for touch temperature and your pain so as a the pet your dermis dermis so you would feel cold because of your dermis and we have also this is also the area where hair follicle like your oils and your sweat glands are located so definitely your dermis is your is the area where work is done in your inter integumentary system because it contains the appendages okay if imuang ang imuang kuan katong um cell factory is your basale or germinativum from the word germinate so ang imong dermis is unsa siya unsa siya gali cell factory so ang imo apo dermis is the fac factory pod siya of all the appendages ha? so work is done in your dermis okay so next is your your skin has also your Aside from that, the third layer is your hypodermis. So we have here, let's go back before I'm going to discuss the blood supply. Let's go back to the picture. So here is your dermis area. Oh, then awataman siya sa imuang ang kaning orange dapit. Pero tarawa ang hair follicle na adira sa imuang subcutaneous gland or your hypodermis. Your hypodermis contain your adipose tissue. What is the purpose of the adipose tissue? What is another term for adipose tissue? It is your fatty tissue. So, if fatty, fatty tissue, so meaning, kanang yellow, dira ang color, o lang tawa na yellow, kanang ubos, anang hair, kanang gitubuan sa hair follicle, that is your fatty tissue or subcutaneous tissue or adipose tissue. What is the purpose of that? That is for the purpose of your fat or adipose tissue it serves as your insulation what do you mean insulation it does provide heat diba? in your body to keep you warm another also your hypodermis because of um, its thickness the yellow baga siya so it also serves as the shock absorber diba? if somebody were going to give you a blow sumbagon ka dili kay ka masakitan because of the present of your hypodermis or your hype out oh, subcutaneous tissue another it also one of the function of your subcutaneous hypodermis is aside from that it also anchors the skin to the muscles oh di ba it anchors the skin to the muscles kay kumulas and then to the muscles and even to your skeleton okay so that is now your layers of the skin. First is epidermis, second is dermis, and the third one is your hypodermis. Okay. Okay, finish now. We are going to proceed with our um, blood supply. The blood supply to the skin is important to the regulation of the body temperature as well as the nourishment of the tissue cells. Interference with to the skin will cause the dead cells and result in areas of ulceration so that is why your nerves it is located in your dermis that is why it you have to um keep it functioning so manang work is done in your dermis because it also contains your blood supply and even your different appendages diba? so your example your glands diba? okay so glands and your hair Okay, next is we're going to discuss now your glands of your skin. So, we have the glands. Your skin has the sebaceous gland, sweat glands, and your seruminous glands. So, on some skin, na a sebaceous gland, sweat glands, and even your seruminous gland. Okay, first is your sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland. We have this gland is found everywhere in the surface of the body except in the palms and soils. I saw your soles of the foot. This produces an oily secretion, the sebum, that prevents hair from becoming dry or brittle. So if you have good, good, 
product good siba patag ini good source of sebaceous gland or presence of sebaceous plenty of sebaceous gland your skin becomes um supple diba and smooth it also forms an oily layer of the skin surface keeping it soft and helping to become water proof oh, so the skin with your sebaceous gland the skin becomes water proof next is your sweat glands they are distributed over the entire skin more numerous in the axillary axillae so or sa mong ilok and then sa palms sa mong kamot and even soles and foreheads so if you have this um these are the this for the sweat glands if you have seen the people to produce lots of water in her body that is because of her sweat glands okay the main purpose of this gland is to act as an emergency mechanism when it is necessary for the body to lose heat by the evaporation of water from its surface. Okay, next is your serominous gland. Oh. So, serominous, uh, anyway, your sweat glands, it is present in the armpits and your groins would ha groins meaning sa mga... Area nga ngit ngit mo nang tadan nga area nga ngit ngit then na uh, because of the presence of sweat glands if it produces your sweat of course kaya ngit ngit siya this is conducive for the growth of microorganism and the last one is your serominous gland ah serominous gland is modified sweat glands found in the skin of the pass of the passage leading into the Ear. So this gland secretes serumen, a yellow waxy substances. Ha, yellow waxy substances that is your sweat glands. Anyway, your sweat glands is your oil glands. Okay, next is your, and in anyways, if you're going to have a tattoo, make sure that your um tattoo needles reaches your sensory part of the skin it reaches into your dermis ha, dermis siya. so so next is we have also your hairs hairs na ta. the hair of your excuse the hair of your um skin sometimes fascinating fascinating kung bapukag hair sa ulo but frustrating if you have a body hair. Diba? Fascinating po kung nice kay mong hair. Pero kung kulot imong buhok, frustrating po siya. So that is your um, hairs. The hair, the hair of the skin is present over most of the body surface with certain exemption on the palms and still on the soles but it's abundant on the scalp manang dapat is you have to provide hair, uh, your hair um, some oils through using your conditioner to, pro, to, 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 be, to help it be, become fascinating okay but if you were going to don't have if you don't have to uh, to buy you don't have money to buy conditioner and that's the time that your hair is frustrating okay so we have in your hair you have the shaft and the root huh that is the root and then you have the shaft also kanang iyang entire hair and next to the hair we have your nails the nails have this what we called as your um cuticle they are horn-like derivatives of the epidermis that protects the tip of the fingers and toes. Okay, they protect the fingers and toes from contact with your with your um, surface. So here the protection. Oh, anyway, task isha. I'm going to give it later. Anyways, for the information of everybody, we have three millions of sweat glands that secrete water and sweat both water and sweat types of sweat glands we have your eccrine this how we're going to spell this e-c-c-r-i-n-e -C -C -E. eccrine are sweat found in your palms forehead and your soles of the foot while your apocrine how would you spell apocrine apocrine are you're going to have 
um, it on your armpits and your groin, groins. But the problem is, your eccrine is, unsaman siya? It has no odor, while your apocrine, it has a stinky odor. Oh, di ba? So, it is um, stinky odor. Manang to block your sweat gland, you have to apply aluminum hydroxide in a form of your mga deodorizer ninyo, kanang mga uh, para sa, li sa ilok. It has what we call aluminum hydroxide that blocks your sweat gland to produce your sweat. And another, we have also your... Um, Anyways, your mammary gland is a modified apocrine sweat gland, ha? Um, wala siya din sa imong um, gland, sa imong skin. Pero, um, it is apocrine. What do you mean by apocrine? It has specially sa imong modified siya because it, ha, it doesn't have any smell kung dili siya baho. Ay, dili siya baho. Kung dili siya panington. But if panington siya, that's the excuse. That is the time that it will going to produce smell. Your ceremonious gland has earwax, ha? But it, of course, it is not offensive. Anyways, you need not to get your earwax every day because it is it should serve for protection. Because if you're going to remove your earwax, the moment your body will going to respond it but by producing more earwax. Then the next day, you're going to remove it again. So, mayon ang body nga, oy, kulang day to, so dungaga na po na ko. Time that you will be, you will, you're going to damage your ceremonious gland okay so i'm going to read to you your functions of the skin actually um i have already told you Nina. so protection the skin acts as a mechanical barrier to prevent invasion of microorganism and other foreign matter and this is also to prevent physical injury to the to the delicate tissue below the skin is also water is a waterproof covering which makes it possible for the body to maintain a high content of water even in dry air okay temperature regulation and then the sweat glands constitute one of the mechanism for cooling the body the evaporation of sweat glands facilitate a loss of heat when the environment becomes too warm diba kung paningtun ka that is well, if you are sweating you are just cooling down your body from heat ha huh? to cool down your body so all you need to do is to wipe all your sweat so that your body will be cooled down through evaporation Thus, the amount of blood brought to the skin is an important factor of the temperature regulation. This is because when blood vessels are dilated, more heat is lost. When the blood vessels are constricted, then less heat is lost. Number three, this it functions also your sense organ. The skin is very much efficient as a sense organs that contains nerve endings which is responsive to pain touch and changes in body temperature so i have discussed that one ganina na next is we have we we're going to have our kids also tomorrow so you label now your um exercise as to the layers of the skin oh, and layers and for some parts because we have some parts oh we have here the hair follicle and all so we're going to stop here Okay, the skeletal system. The skeletal system is um is used to provide an internal framework for the body, protects the organs by enclosure, and anchors skeletal muscles so that muscles can muscle contraction can cause movement. So that is the definition of your um, skeletal system so we have um the, the definition itself serves as the function diba? we have there your framework of your body another it it encloses it protects the organs being enclosed and it also anchors your muscles so that contraction uh, anchor skeletal muscles so that of course your muscle contraction can cause 
your movement. So this is basically the picture of your skeletal system. You may um, try to look at it very caref carefully so that you would identify as to its parts. So madali lang naman siyang i-memorize, hindi siya masyadong complicated. Especially kung medyo you're used to it in you're used to memorize your um, medical terminologies um, exceptionally, diba? So we have, as per definition, we could identify that, of course, your, your skeletal system is very much essential part because without it, we cannot live also we cannot live because we would be like worms that we're going to crawl diba? we're going to crawl because we don't have any foundation because especially uh, because your skeletal your skeleton serves as the from found uh, no, foundation of our human body anyways it is made up of active connective tissue which is constantly breaking down regenerating and repairing itself and when you say breaking down so it will going to um break down in a in a sense that sometimes it um it will going to lack its minerals like your calciums and phosphate so that is why you have to produce more on this mineral so that it will going to regenerate and of course if you have the if you have you seen or have you observed those people who have these fractures so you all you need to do is to encourage healing to occur masumpaira ang bones nga na bali so how would you encourage healing to occur because it, bones does repair itself how by of course, um, ensuring that the part being um, broken will be or it will be maintained, immobilized or immobilized, ha. So as what I've said, it is also an essential essential for homeos hematopoiesis or what do you mean by hematopoiesis? This is your blood cell production which is about a trillion of blood per day. So, asa na occur sa imo ang bones. So, aside from storing your calcium and your phosphorus or phosphate, ha? So, and other minerals to keep nervous, uh, to keep neurons firing and your muscle contract. So that is also the, the very much important um, function of your of your bones. Excuse. So we have the parts here. So it was also stated here the functions specifically one is aside from its contribute it contributes to the to body shape and form our bones perform several important body functions one is framework of the body which is being discussed bones of the legs acts as pillars and support to body trunk stand aside from that we have protection it protects the internal organs so it, it, it encapsulate the internal organs and we have also it is responsible for movement through your skeletal muscles or attached to bones by tendons use the bones as levers to move the body and its parts bone serves as attachment for muscles leg ligaments and tendons because muscles cannot move without your bones and it also serves as as what i've said the storage of your minerals including as aside from that we have also your fat which is being stored in the internal cavities of the bones while your calcium, phos phosphorus, and sodium are also stored in the bones and the hematopoiesis or the blood cell formation production occurs also in the marrow cavities of your bones actually not all bones do have this in certain bones lang po siya. so 
so next is your um, structures. We have there your compact bone. Compact bones are the hard and dense part of the bone marrow which store in the medullary cavity. Okay, medullary cavity. Where is that medullary cavity? Sa loob-loob po siya ng bone nyo po. Di ba have you eaten a animal bone? Example, baboy, baka, manok. So, the part there, um, if you're going to break the bone, you would notice it is similar to what we have here as a picture. Your um, compact bone. Another, we also have your cancellous bone. This or cancellous or spongy. So, cancellous is spongy appearance and filled with marrow in between the spaces. So, where is that spongy? Just at the tip of the bone, di ba? Ang, ang medullary cavity sa loob po siya, yung halo na na area at the center part while your spongy bone or we have your cancellous bone it is located in the it's it is like the head part of the bone diba and the in between the uh, the part that um nagini the part that anchors the bone to another bone oh, with the use of your ligaments. So, that's your cancellous bones. So, your spongy bone, aside from it is spongy in appearance, wala may mali siya kanon sa manok, gali paag manok, di ba? Iyang tumoy ka nang i-attach sa paa, um, attachment sa paa sa manok to the feet of the manok. So, kana siya nga part, lami siya paak paakon. That's your spongy. So, this is made of trabeculae that supports against stress and where the bone marrow is found. So, it also why there, it is also the reason why if we're going to jump, the bone is not hurt anymore because it is soft on that particular part the area that is being attached to the certain to a certain bone soft shot and para siyang caution so it will not have this anyway it is constant constantly lubricated put siya with your on sa manimo imo ang si tawag synovial fluids oh, so you cannot um it is not harmful for you to do so especially if you are not already old, diba? But if you're already old, there's a tendency that is not, it is not properly lubricated anymore. You don't produce, um, maybe you produce less amount of synovial fluid. Eh? So, making now sometimes your knee hurts. Diba? Okay. Okay. So, next is your, that is the part of the bones, ha? Next is what we call this one, a cord arm classification so we have first your long bone your long bones these are bones that exceeds with ends or the epiphysis such as the humerus and metacarpus so long bones are similar to the bone of the dog or the dog bone when it comes to its shape they are longer than they are um they are very much longer and of course on such an example your humerus and your metacarpals in your asa metacarpals in your fingers mas taas siya then the then they are wide so they are longer than they are wide like um the tibia fibula but also the trio bones that makes up the fingers which is your metacarpals so pareha sila long bones sila another from the humerus you have your tibia fibula and the next is your short bones your short bones they are your from the word short they have no long axis 
So, wala po siyang long axis. So, short po siya. Hindi po siya gaya ng numerus. And it is approximately equal in length and width. Example of that is your carpals. We also have saphoid in the wrist and talus in the foot. Okay. So, that next is your flat bones. Flat bones, flat from the word flat. Example is your bones in, so actually your flat bones are thinner like your sternum and scapula. And bones making the brain case, the skull, huh? Okay, the brain case is the skull. And then next is number four. We have there your... Do you have a number four? Irregular bones. So, irregular bones are bones in the vertebrae and also the pelvis. This specialized yet weird internal structure of the bones. Weird siya kasi iba-iba yung shape niya. So, kaya, kaya sina, um, tawag siyang irregular. So, let's, according to, classification according to your, what we call this one as your, Divisions. So one is your actual axial or axial bones. Axial bones are eighty bones all in all. They provide the main structural support of the body. Huh? Your axial bones provide the support of the body. We have there your protects also the central nervous system. So, example of this, it, anyway, it has from eggshell, so it has vertical axis. It could um, rotate ha, along, vertically. So, 80 siya lahat, lahat. Aside from that, you have to remember it protects the central nervous system. So, if the, it does protect the central nervous system, Example, your skull, vertebrae, ribs, and your sternum. Okay. So, 80 ha, remember. Next is your appendicular. Anyways, your eggshell serves as the foundation. Serves also as the foundation of the body. Okay, your um, eggshell. Next is your, what we call this one, appendicular. Appendicular, that is L, 26 bones lang po siya. Appendicular bones helps, help us move around like limbs to your axial skeleton, pelvis, and shoulder blades. So, 26 siya. The, purin niyo yung L ha. These are your movable frame. So, pelvic girdle, upper extremity bones, and lower extremity bones. So, those are the according to your location on division. So, 26. All in all, you have 206. Bones. Ma'am, bakit 206 eh? 80 plus 2, 26. Hindi, hindi po siya abot ng 206. Bakit 206? 206 po siya kasi meron kayong mga malilit na buto. Um, which has uh, different sizes from the smallest bone sa imong stapes. Asang stapes the pet. S-T-A-P-E-S. In your inner ear. To large femur of the thigh. So we have other bones that are not identified since it is that small already. Just like you have 8 cranial bones, 14 facial bones. And of course in your skull you have 22 bones. Diba? So there are plenty. Making all in all as 26. Okay. Then next is your spinal column. Para as is spinal column. Your spinal column is... Excuse. Spinal column functions to protect the spinal cord, spine, and spinal nerves. So, yung column, yung buto nyo po, eto, yan siya. So, dyan po, sa loob-loob nyan, is my spinal nerves. 
end cord attach of attachment of the ribs of the back so attachment of the rib of the back and it also transmit the weight of the body to the lower part of the body and provide mobility of the support of the support and of the support no no buang na ko wait sa ah, katulog si mami ay nakatulog ko protects the spinal cord and the spinal nerves and attachment of the ribs and the muscles of the back okay and transmit the weight uh, of the head and the body to the lower extremity plus provide mobility of the trunk where's your trunk so say you could twist it your trunk and of course it does support the head so your atlas is the unsang atlas have you have you seen an atlas an atlas supports the head it is a tiny bone located in the upper part of your vertebrae that supports your head here ito siya yan yung pinaka pinaka where the cord was being attached okay so it does contribute to your height parts of your 25 percent ang higana contribution height ana parts of the disc we have annulus fibrosus and nucleus pulposus annulus fibrosus helps retain various spinal motions provides tensile strength for the disc while nucleus pulposus to to evenly distribute pressure throughout the disc and from one vertebrae body to the next under loaded condition so they this um parts does provide the disc strength to carry and move about the bat to carry objects heavy especially and to move about okay the bow carbon they can get a new rock on to go my that is because of the disc and the curves the primary curves we have key forces and the secondary curve we have your low doses they are pot posteriorly projected curves ang imong kyphosis and your lordosis is your anteriorly projected curves let's see if you're going to observe that one in the picture oh we have your kyphosis here have you have seen so from here from the cervical area cranial vertebra here or ir just below your irregular bones na uh, no word so here is the picture of your kyphosis di ba pa question mark from the from the first bone your atlas which is the smallest padulong dira naka question mark siya that is curve kyphosis curve then that is and then when you're going to reach now your pelvic area uh no in your thoracic vertebra area here you have your lordosis so this is your back and then the chest in here this one this one and then we have also your abdomen your lordosis curve is very very much prominent if you are pregnant that is why that is why your lordosis curve is said to be the pride of pregnancy okay and of course there's another curve in your sacral area here especially kat madag ko globot da ko pa siya curve and the support of the spinal column we have the static support of the spinal column are the ligaments what you mean by static support static meaning um it was provided dili na siya matanggal but the dynamic support are the muscles what you mean dynamic so the thing that will going to move and we have also these structures are sensitive the, the support such as your ligaments and your um muscles are sensitive are structures that are sensitive to pain okay next we will going to discuss your joints so types of joints we have fibrous fibrous or the immovable or no joint cavity immovable joints cartilaginous or no joint cavity but permits little or no motion 
While synovial joints, there, there is a space exists with articulating surfaces or your synovial fluid and articular cartilages. So these are the ones that makes you move the, the synovial joints. Okay. Excuse me. We have classification of your joints. Konti lang po yung ano dito. Depends na. So, um, classification of your joints, we have your structural. So, what they are made of. Oh, structural. They are bind together. What, uh, and then another is, it is your cartilage or the fluid. That is your structural. Well, your next is your functional. What they do or how much joint or how much movement they're going to do so they're going to do now we have also your because they move me we're going to discuss your fibrous or immovable joint as your synarthrosis synarthrosis s-y-n-a-r-t-h-r-o-s-e-s synarthrosis Synarthrosis, they are. This is the 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 joints in your cranial cranium area, non movable joints. Di ba yung mga dinis sa imong kwan ba ulo di ba na imong identify man ang imong head into frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital. The one that join them together is your synarthrosis, and next is your amphiarthrosis. These are slightly movable joints. So, what are they? So, this is your pelvic joints, di ba? This also, pelvic joints. Kani mong mo joints in a pelvis. They can move a little to prevent you from shock. Especially from running and of course from... From um, giving birth, di ba? Your pelvis pelvic joint will going to move a little when you're going to give birth so that you will your your baby could go out from the womb that is also why that pag mo ka anak na ka mas square na gamay ang imo ang lubot kay ay imo ang hips kay dili naman siya mubalik oh especially if you're not go doing any exercises so you you will have it as is and next, the third one is your diarthrosis or your freely movable joints. Again, freely movable joints, diarthrosis. We have D I A R T H T H R O S E S. These are the joints in the lim limbs and the knees. Okay, diba? You could move about. So. Oh, di ba? Gamay ra ang description. Sa so, imong fibros, eh, kay sila ra magyapon. Immovable joint siya, mostly. So, sa imong sutures of the skull, fibros. As well, pareha siya sa imong synarthrosis. Dayon, ang cartilaginous, the joints in your vertebrae, vertebrae, and, of course, there is slight movement, the same po siya sa, sa, Amphiarthrosis and your synovial that is your diarthrosis that is joints which is freely movable that is used in dancing and in doing in doing your sports. So features of your joints we have your your joints have this articular cartilage that covers the opposing bone surface. So it is also constantly lubricated with your synovial fluid and of course there is also what we called as your joint cavity ah, joint cavity and it is also um, it has also a sensory nerve fiber and blood blood vessel or that blood blood vessel so so we have six configuration of these joints. We have here your um what do you mean six um six configuration the um what do you call this one? One is your plane joint. So one flat bones glide over the other. 
example we have it has a ito, not example it has a um in ito, ganit, inserted by a cartil cartilage while your next is your angular joints angular uh, angular joints or your hinge joint so these are hinge joint kanang mag flexion extension ka ng flexion extension so you're going to have that one your angular joints hyperextension abduction adduction those are angular joints or hinge joints while your condylar joints this is excuse this is um example if your this is your biaxial joint movement what even by axial duhara unsa man siya example making a fist kanang mangumo ka that is your con excuse condylar joints while your ball and socket is multiaxial movement aha man ang ball nimo bi kaning ball nimo sa imong hip attach sa imong sa uh, sa imong ball kaning bone nimo sa imong femur attach sa imo ang hip that is your ball and socket joint or mo kana pong shoulder ni mo kani imong shoulder attach sa imong humerus diba that is also ball and socket joint so um they move so hip and shoulder joints the move is flexible the move also is sometimes um put a person in danger okay okay kuma dislocate ni mo next is your saddle joint okay this is opposition example thumbs up okay why no ma thumbs up ka because you have your saddle joint another we have also um pivot joint that is your example you're going to say um supination and pronation that is your pivot joint pivot means um uh, what do you call this one? Kanang tuyuk ba? Supination, supination, pronation. Supination, pronation. Oh. Anyway, astrology is the study of the bones. Ha? Remember? Astro astrology is the study of your bones. Pilagay ito, your sa imong cervical, we have six. Sa imong bones, cervical 6, oh, 7, the eye, thoracic 12, lumbar 5, sacral 5, and your coxi 5. Or not, sacrum or your pelvis. Okay. Okay, do you have any question with this? Okay, so will you answer the different bones um, requested from you in your exercise? So exercise number four. And in exercise number five, you label now your vertebrae. So after that, we will be having a quiz on this topic.